using Google Sheets as much as I do, I really need it to have an easy way to locate duplicated data. That not being a process within Sheets itself, I set about making my own application to do that. I'm gonna run through right now what I already have made. What I have made is a application that can search a single column or a single row for duplicated information. And this is handy. However, oftentimes with my data sets being a teacher, student names, grades, ID numbers, all of that information that I'm looking for duplicates in is not contained within a single column. So I wanted to be, have a, um, I wanted to have the ability to search an entire sheet itself. And that's what hopefully I will get to um, today. If I can see the future, which I can, I will get to. <laughs> All right, so what I'm starting off here is function read sheet data. I pride myself on my creativity of my function names. That's not true because they're not creative. However, uh, function read sheet data, this is gonna be very similar to the function immediately below it, read column data, and the one below that, read row data. There would be likely be a way to combine these to eliminate redundancies. However, for tutorial processes uh, and kind of teaching Google app scripts, I think it is much more clear to break those out while showing you what they can do. What I realized here, I was defining a variable called last row within that read sheet data. Then I realized if I was gonna define last row and last column, those were already defined, and I just moved last column up onto line seven, uh, in the functions below. So in order to reduce redundancy, I went ahead and put those at the top of our application so they could be universally accessible to all of the functions so we wouldn't have to keep defining them uh, each time we ran one of our functions. So now, moving right along, I'm on row 10, variable row range, sheet get range, one, one, last row, last column. And what that is saying is that we are going to start in the first row and the first column, and we're gonna to go to the last row and the last column and get all of that data. And then, oop, I'm on line 12, but I need to read line 11. Uh, variable range array, I then go ahead and use that range and get all the values out of it. On 12, I'm writing through convert to a one-dimensional array. Um, that comment is just to keep me in the loop. I often forget what I'm uh, looking at with code if I come back a week or a month later. What I'm doing with this range array is I am concatenating and applying this. Um, what I'm doing is Google Sheets will return our data with get values in a two-dimensional array that will be a problem for how I'm going to go through and locate the duplicated information. So I'm using concatenate to get rid of the two dimensional array and turn it into the, a single dimension array. And then I'm going to return it down there at the bottom, return range array. To make sure this is working, I always do this. It's easier to check while we're coding. Logger.log range array. And let's see how we did. Read sheet data, debug. Ah. Yes, since I am technically building a new little application, um, I do need to approve it. Yes, Google, I trust myself. I think it's safe-ish. Hmm, that looks successful. Yes, and there is all of our data, and it's contained within a single array instead of two. Here I'm just showing you that the data is correct because that was the information on our spreadsheet as well. So, so far, so good. I am going to need to create a main function because I also want to, aha, and this is what I was going to look at is the function to find duplicates. In that main function, once I do find the data, once I read uh, the sheet data and I return that range array, I then am going to use the returned array and search through it for duplicated info. And this find duplicates function um, actually will work for the entire sheet of data. It's what I use for rows and columns as well. Um, and it does because I'm taking all of that data into a single array. So here we are now, I'm moving on to the main uh, function, sheet, main. Again, creativity is a strong point. I don't need to put in a parameter here for column or row because I do not need to uh, pick a specific row. When those parameters are entered, is actually when the user selects them in the menu. 
um, and then they would write them into a prompt. However, the user doesn't need to give us info in a prompt to read an entire sheet and look for duplicated data. So I'm diving right in, we're on line 80, we're on line 80, variable data equals read sheet data, straightforward there, we know that function, now on to 81. I am gonna copy and paste the code from column main uh, because it works just fine for line 81. Uh, and that is because the array that we are using, that one dimensional array, whether I'm getting the column info or the sheet info, I am getting the same type of array. All right, now let's log this to make sure I didn't break anything yet. Switch that out to our new fancy sheets main. This is looking good, duplicated. Fifth, 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 sixth, eighth, colors, Elliot, Lane. I see Lane there. Grades are obviously duplicated because there's a whole bunch of fifth, sixth, and then orange and all those colors. So it looks like, um, and by looks like, I mean our program is currently producing or finding the duplicated information. So that's excellent. Now we need to move on and we're gonna use my index function, get indexes, data, duplicates. Yes, so we're gonna pass along the data, which is from the read sheet data, and then the duplicates that we found. So that will be an array of all the data and an array of the duplicated information into our get index function. And again, it should work because the data is formatted in a similar way. It should be able to return those indexes. That looked good. And oof, that's a lot. Ah, I forgot with all the grades and things like that, there will be a lot of indexes. That does though look promising. Keep in mind for this, um, if you want more detail on the indexes and the duplicate function, I do have videos where I'm building those parts of this application as well. So click on my channel or uh, refer to, uh, I don't even know, the boxes after this video. Yeah, I'm sure you can find them. Uh, they're also within my blog, uh, which is the site that I'm going to link below with the code to this. So there's definitely videos of me walking through all those functions. Now what I'm getting ready to do is since we successfully returned um, the data, we read that through, got it assigned to a variable, we found the duplicates and we have indexes for those duplicates, we can now go through the highlighting process where we show off to the user what, uh, what cells have duplicated information. This function is going to be unique Whereas for the duplicates and the index function, it would work just the same because we had a single array, regardless of what data we were getting from a column, a row, or the entire sheet. Now, due to us having that single array, we need to figure out what row or column the duplicated information is in when we return refer back to the sheet. We are doing this through an array and not just scanning the entire sheet for this, because Google will yell at us if we do. It will say heavy load or, or something like that. It might freeze up entirely and air out. It might attempt to do it. Um, actually, I'm fairly positive it would air out, especially if we get to a larger, uh, larger sets of data, which I have being a teacher, having uh, hundreds of students, it, it would happen. So we read it into an array. We find duplicates within the array. We find the indexes of that duplicated information in the array. Once we have those indexes, we need to figure out which row it is in. And that's what I'm going through right now. Indexes, all right, so we have a loop here, for in equals zero in indexes dot length in plus plus, because we are going to loop through our entire array of indexes of that duplicated information. We need to find in the sheet each one of those indexes from the array. So what I am doing then is if index in, whatever index in that in the index array we're on, is less, is greater, I'm sorry, is greater than last column, if it's greater than the last column, that means it's not in the first row. 
So if that is the case, we are going to make row equal to math.floor. That means forget about anything after the decimal when we do this math. So index.in, so whatever index number we have there, over the last row. So if our number is 14 and we only have four columns, that is going to turn out a three because four can completely go into 14 three times. And then it's gonna take 12 minus three, or it's gonna go, whoo, it's gonna take 14 minus 12 and say, okay, this means it is in column two. And that is what I am doing with index n on row 69, index n equals index n minus last column times row, and then row plus plus. So that's just getting us through each row. I then finally set get range row indexes plus one set background yellow. That's straightforward. I am editing the sheet. I am making those matching indexes yellow. Okay, so let's see if it works. Oh, I believe I just ran it there and thought, why is nothing highlighted? I think this is good. Um, and that's because I ran sheet main, which doesn't actually call the highlight sheet, highlight sheet function, you know, details. All right, let's see how we do with this. Debug. And excellent. So we are successfully iterating through the array, getting those numbers, those index numbers, finding which row they're in, and then finding which column. Now I'm adding random garbage to make sure that it does not uh, recognize empty cells as duplicated information, because that would be an issue. Running, this is looking all right, maybe. Okay, that ran, aha. And this is a problem. We can't have all of the empty cells be highlighted as well. That's confusing. It gives me a highlighter headache, honestly. So we need to find a resolution for that. At this point, I am trying to figure out what I could do. The flaw is likely, and I believe the flaw is within the highlight sheet duplicates. No, 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 no. It's in the find duplicates function. I need my find duplicates function to realize, hey, empty cells aren't duplicate. There's no information there. So my function real quick, sort data, slice sort, what I do there is with each array that I pass to this function, I slice and sort it alphabetically. I then compare each point to the point next to it, looking for duplicated info. What I'm doing now, if, and that if statement, not only if it's the same info, but I added and and if it is not, empty, if it's not an empty string, if it isn't sorted data, I is not equal to uh, quote, quote, emptiness, I guess. All right. And then what I just am going to race through real quick is running it. And that looks far more successful. One final step I would like to do here is go ahead and build on top of the user interface that I had already been making with my menu and my prompt. I What I got rid of there was a separator and a submenu. I had just created that in um, actually a previous video to demonstrate submenus. We won't need it for this application. Right here at the top though, I'm gonna do add item search sheet and I don't need to show a prompt so I can run when the user selects that from a menu, the actual function of sheet main. Perfect. Um, and I didn't put parentheses behind sheet main, which you do not do when you're running it through the UI stuff. I always forget that. Okay, let's test this out for real now. Moment of truth. Refresh. We should have our menu pop up because it's on open. Excellent. And now find duplicates. So Success. And now it will be much easier for me to locate duplicated data within a sheet. Hopefully it will be easier for you too, possibly. Um, 
And again, if you're interested in the other parts of this, I did dive into a partially built program here. I have videos walking you through that process. Um, if you aren't interested, but watch this video, um, I don't, you should hit like, you should hit subscribe. Um, if you found this entertaining, helpful, or neither, um, just because it gives me warm fuzzies and like butterflies, wings, and things like that. Um, if you have questions on this, let me know. Um, I'll post the code. Feel free to edit, steal, change, uh, do whatever you need with it.